In this episode of Zoomer Life. I've done research on the effects of noise from a passing train on children's learning. When I compared the reading scores of the children in those classes with those on the quiet side of the building, guess what? They were nearly a year behind in reading. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. For several years now, I have been predicting that the next big environmental issue will be noise pollution. In particular, my focus has been on the kind of din that we all run into when we enter a typical restaurant or, uh, or even a lounge. You can barely hear yourself think, let alone actually get to talk to the people that you might be having dinner with. And so, as, as these movements go, when I first began to talk about this, as I say, three, four, five years ago, I was considered a bit of a crank. Uh, but then, since then, we've, uh, we've started the Anti-Noise Pollution League in and around our classical music radio station, and the number of submissions and registrations, that is to say, restaurants and lounges that are either silent or only play civilized classical music has begun to increase at a very rapid rate. And, um, and then lately, we've added an unrecommended list to the proceedings, and that has also proved to be very effective and very popular. So uh, finally, uh, I, I was very gratified when I heard that there were actually food critics that were beginning to join my crusade, our crusade, and, and then latterly some academics who actually have begun to study the issue of noise in a very serious way. And so that's how we came to come upon Dr. Arline Bronzaft, who is here from the City University of New York. She's a professor emerita at that fine institution and has become a specialist who conducts research, who lectures, and who advises citizens on the harmful effects of noise on mental and physical well-being. Dr. Bronzaf, please. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Here I am from New York City. And of course, you're going to say New York City. Of course, you should know something about noise. But according to Moses, I'm really a Canadian. You see, my mother is from Toronto. She is a Canadian national. And according to Jewish law, even though I was born in the United States, I am a Canadian. And should Sarah Palin, Mitt Romney, or any of those Tea Party people get elected, I don't even have to tell the embassy that I want dual citizenship. I'm going to quote from Judaic law and say, yes, I am a Canadian. So I thank you. My family is all here, and I'm going to be spending time with them. Now, New York, noisy. Now, you heard earlier that activity was key to health. And I'm going to tell you that some of the most active people live in Manhattan, where I live. I do not own a car. We have never had a car in my family, my husband, never had a driver's license. How's that? I travel to school almost three hours a day from southern Brooklyn, to, uh, where I used to live, to Manhattan by subway. I travel the subways, I travel the buses, and I walk. Walk through Manhattan. Everyone that visits Manhattan tends to walk through Manhattan. You'll notice Manhattanites, not necessarily the visitors, tend to be slimmer, they're not obese, and they seem to be healthier. So according to what Dr. Zach said, we should live a long, long time, except we are subjected to a great deal of noise. Travel our subways, and you'll hear that sound. Walk down our streets, and you'll hear our traffic, and the car honking. You'll hear that, and the crowds. So we have a lot of noise in New York City. But let me tell you something about New Yorkers. We're really very provincial, particularly Manhattanites. When we come home and we go into our apartments, we may as well live in a small town. We expect quiet in the home. 
We don't want the person upstairs putting on her TV set at 2 in the morning or going to work at 6 a.m. on a floor that's not carpeted. We do not like aircraft flying over our homes, and we don't like the next-door neighbor's child who rives his motorcycle at 6 a.m. We want quiet in the homes. So if you're thinking of New York as being a very noisy town, yes, but we don't live on Times Square, and we happen to have the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Probably most of you have never been to Staten Island, a borough where my son-in-law is now a rabbi. And it's interesting, the president that gave us the Noise Control Act was Richard Nixon. Remember that as you think of all the other negative things he did. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life, health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. You will find that New Yorkers want quiet. And very fortunately, we were in the forefront of introducing a noise code back in the early 70s. And four years ago, our mayor, who was an environmentalist, you know he can't even smoke on the beach in New York City, on a park bench, and you can't smoke in restaurants. So our mayor went after smoking, and he really pushed for the revision of the noise code. So here we have a city that may sound noisy to you, but we're in the forefront. Is the rest of the country in the forefront? No. Were we at one time? Yes. But our government has failed terribly, where we had introduced legislation guaranteeing every American. Imagine every American is guaranteed quiet. Imagine having that as a law. Now who abides by it? So when we first introduced it in the early 70s, we put out literature, we tried to educate people about the dangers of noise, and then we elected Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan essentially shut that down. And it's interesting, the president that gave us the Noise Control Act was Richard Nixon. Remember that as you think of all the other negative things he did. He also gave us the Clean Air Act. But Ronald Reagan is not the only one to blame. There were presidents after him, the two Bushes. Bill Clinton, who does wear a hearing aid, I'm told, because Bill Clinton has lost some of his hearing. He was a baby boomer, and he plays a musical instrument, and he used helicopters. Ronald Reagan, by the way, also needed some hearing assistance because, I've been told, a gunshot went off at a place where he was shooting a movie, and he lost some hearing. And even though I did vote for Barack Obama, I can tell you when it comes to noise, he fits into the category with the two Bushes, Clinton and Reagan. You see, I do not discriminate by party. Whether they're Republicans or Democrats, I don't discriminate. So we did attempt to do something, but we stopped it. And New York City, though, has continued it. When it comes to noise, let me differentiate it quickly from sound. You're going to listen to music later on. You're not going to call that mu music noise. You know that there are wonderful sounds. I've written a children's book called Listen to the Raindrops, in which I talk about, in the book, the wonderful sounds that children can listen to, and then I talk about the harsh sounds, the noises. Sound, whether it's loud or soft, a dripping faucet, you're not going to like that. That is unwanted sound is noise. So your upstairs neighbor sound may not be that loud, but when you're falling asleep at 2 in the morning, it's noise. So remember, noise is unwanted, uncontrollable, unpredictable sound. The other interesting thing about sound, though, is if it's loud, and I'm going to talk to the musicians in this audience, I'm going to urge you to go to Pete Townsend's website. Pete Townsend of The Who, you remember The Who, a wonderful band, uh, if you go back to the 70s. And he, unfortunately, loved his music. But if music is loud, and even if you love it, you will find out that can affect your hearing. 
So be protective of your hearing and tell this to the young people in your family because they're now wearing headsets, listening to the music so loudly that it could intrude on their hearing. If I turn to this audience, and many of you older, and I said, how good is your hearing? If you were really honest, you will tell me that you're now playing your TV sets louder, and you are asking people to repeat what was said, particularly if you're in one of those restaurants that tends to have some piped music. So be protective of your hearing. As far as noise is concerned, that can affect us indirectly. Sound, loud sound, has an effect on the ears itself. What noise does is it aggravates us. It upsets us, it disturbs us, it bothers us. We get very frustrated, and as a result, we become stressful. If your neighbor keeps playing that music and waking you up, and you can't stop it, you're gonna get very upset. If you're being aggravated or bothered by noise, you will find that you're not leading a decent quality of life. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life. Health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. Studies have been done looking at the effects of noise of people who live near railroads, in the flight paths, adjacent to highways, and they have found that noise is just not annoying. It's detrimental to your health. And in the area of cardiovascular disorders, the literature is quite strong. I have just come back from London where I had a book launching with my four UK associates. I guess being a Canadian, I do better with the British as well. And we came out with a book, Why Noise Matters. And in that book, I'm responsible. I did the chapter on the health effects. And I can say unequivocally that noise is detrimental to health. The World Health Organization has said, even if you have not yet evidenced the symptoms, if you're being aggravated or bothered by noise, you will find that you're not leading a decent quality of life. And good health is not just the absence of symptoms. Good health is saying, hey, I don't have to stay in my house every Sunday morning and not go outdoors because my neighbor, and I'm giving you a Toronto example, by the way, my neighbor has all these children over at the swimming pool and they're just screaming and shouting. And I agree, children should play, but it's just a, a little too much. But what if you're living now in Nassau County and you find out that the Federal Aviation Administration has rerouted your, the planes? They're now coming over your home. They're now over your home and you are getting very upset and disturbed, and the, count, uh, the congresswoman is getting lots of complaints. So what I'm gonna tell you about noise, even if you think you haven't experienced it, it might follow you. I don't want you to see it as a New York phenomenon, an urban phenomenon, a large city phenomenon. Just a couple of years ago, I had a case in Cromwell, New Zealand. Do you really think Cromwell, New Zealand is noisy? But that was preceded by a case in Montana and one in Wyoming. You see, you move to a quiet retirement place, the home is beautiful, and then they decide to build a motocross raceway right near your home. Do you know how many people now began to complain about noise? So what I have to warn you, if, if you don't have it in your immediate life, don't think you're safe. Uh, my other testimony, right here, Picton, Ontario. What's happening there? wind turbines. Now, I am for alternative sources of energy. I do not speak against or for wind turbines, no matter how the attorneys in Connecticut and in Ontario have tried to portray me. I look and say, is there a potential harm? Will the noise bother the people? Do no harm. Don't start distributing medicine, as we do in the United States, and then find out 
it's harmful. So the same thing with wind turbines, particularly the low frequency noise. It just gets under your skin and the people are complaining. So what I have to tell you is that if you think you're living in a relatively quiet community, don't be so comfortable about it. It may follow you. Now, so we know, and noise affects you psychologically. You're stressed out, you're unhappy, it could be physiological, it could make life miserable for you, diminish your quality of life. And let me warn you, so how many here are grandparents? I am. And let me tell you, noise affects children. Noisy homes diminishes cognitive development, language development. I've done research on the effects of noise from a passing train on children's learning. When I compared the reading scores of the children in those classes with those on the quiet side of the building, guess what? They were nearly a year behind in reading. I was fortunate to be able to persuade two agencies, tough agencies in New York City, the Transit Authority to abate the sound adjacent to that school and the Board of Ed to put acoustical ceilings. And guess what? When the rooms got quieter, guess what happened to the children's learning? They improved. All of us should be responsible because the one thing we cannot legislate, even though New York City has a wonderful noise code, is we can't legislate good manners. And so much of noise is a function of people just being rude. Get the latest Zoomer Life news, presenter information, and watch streaming video at www.zoomerlifeconference.ca. Zoomer Life. Health, wellness, and longevity from the world's brightest minds. Uh, one of the things I inquired about is what happens to people who do very well in school? How do they fare later on in life? What happens to them when they get older, when they graduate Phi Beta Kappa, which is the highest honor society in American colleges? How do they do? I'm not going to tell you. Well, they did well, but what were their childhoods like? And this is what I learned from these high academic achievers. Their homes were quieter. Parents knew that children had to study, read in quiet arenas. Yes, in the streets they can play, at home should be quieter. They also told me their parents didn't shout and scream at them. Their parents looked at them with stern faces, but strong words, but not shouting and screaming. So let people know quieter homes are necessary for development. And my colleague has found that noisy homes will lead to cognitive and language impairment. So we know that noise is harmful. The one thing you can remember is that all of us should be responsible because the one thing we cannot legislate, even though New York City has a wonderful noise code, is we can't legislate good manners. And so much of noise is a function of people just being rude. In the United States, we speak of Bill of Rights. We should also have written a Bill of Responsibilities because a civilized society is one in which people recognize the rights of others. And if we could just, in some way, teach people good manners, then we'd probably have less noise. When we lower the din, you will also find that not only is it quieter, it's going to be healthier. Now, the one thing that I think Moses would appreciate in, in our book, Why Noise Matters, we have a chapter de that deals with pipe music in restaurants. And there actually is an organization in the UK and the US, I don't know about Canada, that's called Pipe Down. And they are working not only to quiet things down in restaurants, but in retail stores and shopping centers. And they've been quite successful. So please, educate yourselves, educate those near you, introduce to your families the idea that sometimes it's good to be quiet. Because let me tell you something about quiet. I'm a psychologist. I know it's good for the head. I, I've looked at the research and I've actually conducted some of it in terms of it's good for the body, but it's also good for the spirit. We should bring a little quiet and silence in our lives. I'm not saying that you don't come to New York to listen to the exciting sounds, 
We're not going to stop the ball from falling on Times Square New Year's Eve, nor are we going to say no to the passing characters in our Thanksgiving Day parade. And I hope the Yankees win next time, because the roars in Yankee Stadium make me feel terrific, and it doesn't bother my ears at all. But for the rest of the time, we could lessen the din. We don't need it on the trains. We don't need the car honking. By the way, our taxi uh, commissioner has just said that he's going to clamp down on the honking of taxi horns. So remember, quiet in your life, good for the body, good for the head, and good for the spirit. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. That was perfect. Thank you. Let's get a little picture okay. here. We'll oh, get a picture. yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you.